Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I am Mike B and today I'm going to be addressing something that has been in the comments now for quite some time regarding military surplus firearms and why don't companies just reproduce that or why doesn't somebody reproduce military surplus firearms? Well, they kind of do already with some things and we'll get into that in a little bit, but I'm going to explain to you why it's a really dumb decision for a company to manufacture military surplus firearms. And I'm going to give some examples and um, it just doesn't work out. Sorry to burst your bubble. So if you want to stop watching, there's your answer right there. If you want me to explain why you want to hear that, keep watching. So point number one is there is no point of reproducing something that's still in the primary market. So that's like, I mean, with any collectible, that's like saying you're gonna you're gonna reproduce a 2020 because it's 2020 uh, Toyota Prius. And in doing so, you're going to have to spend more money than what Toyota pays to make a Prius in order to make a Prius that's a knockoff Prius. It's not a real one, but it's a reproduction of it. It's still on the market. You're not going to get a lot for it. So there's really no point in doing that, is there? It's the same with military surplus firearms. Although the prices have been increasing and they are getting to be annoyingly high, they're still on the market. They're still in the primary not as much anymore, but they're definitely on the secondary market and they're still relatively affordable for the most part. There are some exceptions as with anything, but um, yeah. So what you're looking at is, you know, let's just take this. So you've got, why don't they reproduce a KAR-98, right? Because these are getting really damn expensive. Um, I don't have that many of them. I have two of them. One of them is actually Yugoslavian capture. This is the only actual German one that I have. And, um, had this for this is one of the first surplus firearms I ever bought because it was cool and it was actually cheap. Now, to reproduce this, right, you have to factor in that any modern Mauser rifle made to the specifications and the quality of these rifles is going to run at least, made by Mauser, to around 2000 US dollars at this point for just a hunting rifle. No scope, no anything, no accessories. Just because of the Mauser quality, it's going to run you about $2,000. Now, Let's think about this. The cost of machinery, getting the correct uh, manufacturer's licenses from the ATF, from the government, from your local state, whatever needs to happen. Um, insurance, liability insurance, uh, manufacturing insurance, whatever kind of insurance you could think of, that's gonna be insanely expensive. The cost of materials, uh, German steel or Swiss steel, for example, is not cheap. In the, in the same kind of steel that they used for the Mauser KAR-98, and the um, Swiss K31, that's gonna be an astronomical cost on top of all the costs of your setup. I just explain the machinery and everything. So we're looking at, you know, for, I think, a couple years ago, I did like a, a kind of a number crunching of the specific rifle, the K31, and what it would cost to manufacture this today. And it was in the 2000 something dollar range um, to, to make this exact rifle. That was a few years ago. I would agree with it more now. I don't know if it was really accurate back then, but again, I'm not an expert on anything. Um, but yeah, so that's just an example of what it would cost to just make a K31. Those are going for between five and $800 now, or four and $800, which is still relatively affordable. It's better than 2000 something dollars. So that's what I'm saying. The cost benefit is not there. Another thing is there's absolutely zero collector's value in a reproduction military surplus firearm. So, I mean, let, let me explain something to you really quick that I actually witnessed. When I was younger, um, this is a surplus Springfield manufactured M1 rifle. When I was younger, Springfield Armory was actually making reproductions of the M1 rifle to get more of them out. And uh, they actually cost at that time a little bit more than a surplus M1 did, but the whole selling point was that they were newly manufactured and the parts weren't worn out, blah, blah, blah. They were better. They, you know, Springfield made them really good, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the big selling point. I think they were retailing back then for about a thousand to $1,200 for a new one. And at that point, M1 rifles were between actually 450 and like $800 that I was seeing. So they cost more, even though they were newly made. And nowadays, they have zero collector's value. So somebody that paid a thousand to twelve hundred dollars for one of those new manufactured Springfield M1s is only going to be able to get that back. And if they fired it, they're probably going to be able to get less back. It's just like driving a car off the lot. 
Um, so that's another problem with making reproductions of military surplus firearms. Um, and with that, there is a lack of demand. If you, and there was a lack of demand for those new manufactured Springfield M1s, which is why they stopped making them. Um, and there would be a lack of demand for these rifles because, again, if you're gonna if you're gonna get charged at least two thousand dollars for a KAR 98, and you can get a surplus one that's actually got historic value for even six seven hundred dollars, still a lot in my opinion, but that's a totally different thing. I, I whine and bitch about that all the time, so I don't need to do that in this video. Seven hundred to eight hundred dollars, or six to eight hundred dollars, is a lot more affordable than over two thousand dollars and this has collector's value it's actually it was a military firearm that was carried uh, issued probably and used um, for its purpose at least in training um, people people that think their military surplus firearm is unfired are incorrect um, a lot of them even if they weren't fired in combat were fired at least at the factory or in training so that's something to consider kind of getting off on a tangent there so <clears throat> the price would be absolutely asinine for a reproduction um, just to actually get one it would be so much more so if you think a 350 dollars to 400 dollars, which people are stupidly paying for a mosin that got 9130 is a lot well if you had to manufacture this get all the tooling and everything set up the company would have to sell one of these rifles for at least a thousand dollars to make it worth it and the demand just simply wouldn't be there because nobody would buy them the company would go bankrupt more than likely or something bad like that and it would just be a complete flop. Now, it does make sense. Come on, baby, just stand up. Just stand up. Work with me here. Work with me. It does make sense for certain one certain military surplus rifles that are being reproduced currently, such as the Sturmgewehr 44, the um, FG 42, and then there's there's a couple others that are being reproduced. Um, some of them are built off original parts kits. Some of them are actually just straight up reproduced. But I, yeah, the SMG FG42 is completely reproduced, and so is the, um, I forgot the name of the company, the, the STG44. Here's the thing, though. To buy an original Sturmgewehr or a, a FG42, you're going to have to fork out for an MP44 or Sturmgewehr 44, you're going to have to fork out for one of those at least $25,000 for one in okay shape to get a class 3 one, an original one. Um, for an FG42, you're going to have to fork out 75 to 100 grand, depending on the model and all that stuff and the condition. So it does make sense for a company to reproduce the FG42 and sell it for $5,000, which is an absolute fraction of the cost of a real one and the rarity. So the other thing is, there's tons of these things floating around. Even though they're getting more expensive, there's millions of surplus firearms floating around the United States. So that's another thing that kind of, you know, the demand won't be there. They're still here. The cost-benefit analysis just isn't good. So... Those are the main reasons why it would be really stupid and why more companies are not reproducing military surplus firearms. And it is what it is, guys. So uh, a lot of these comments are coming from younger people, and no offense to you guys, I was just there a few years ago. You may not have a real good grasp on uh, how much money or how, how expensive things are and how much money it takes to actually do something like this. So someday you might, you'll, you'll get the concept and you'll be like, oh shit, yeah, that, that would be dumb to spend millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars to make a couple hundred thousand potentially over the course of a few years. It, it's just not a good investment. It's not, it's not viable at all unless you're doing something like, you know, extremely hard to find and rare. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetimes. I don't think they're going to get that expensive to the point where the cost benefit analysis would actually be worth it to reproduce them. That's my opinion. Maybe it'll happen sooner than later. I hope it doesn't. I hope these still remain at least within the grasp, the, the realistic grasp of an average person to at least save up for one of these rifles and get them. So, all right, hopefully that answered the uh, question and kind of debunked the kind of myth that, you know, it would be a good idea for people to, or companies to reproduce these things. So that's all I've got. If you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them, but should have answered most of them and kind of proven that point a little bit. Just think about it. So thank you for watching, everybody. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, allow me to get more props and stuff like that, more helmets, more ballistic test videos, more um, just educational videos on stuff in history in general, consider supporting the channel via Patreon or becoming a channel member. The link to my Patreon is in the description, and you can hit the join button below this video to become a channel member. Five bucks a month or more gets you onto my Discord server, which is a pretty cool time. I learn a lot on there. A lot of cool information is exchanged and we have a good time on there. That's one perk and the, the biggest perk is like I just said, helping me be able to expand the content 
I can fund this channel out of pocket to an extent, but this year has been great, especially for allowing me to expand the content and what I make videos on and using actual historical items to kind of drive a point home. So that really does help. If you can't support the channel financially, I totally get that. That's totally fine. I understand. Um, just make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and share these videos out um, sharing videos really does help then I get more subscribers and I get more people that are you know interested in this stuff and kind of learning from me um, about historical topics firearms and stuff like that so that really helps too that's a great way to show support so thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next video